Hello, Treasure Hunter. I'm uh, Ryan. I have been hacking things my whole life. This is a all plastic scoop I got for a beach hunting for coins. It's industrial grade ABS or PET G. I have the file down below. So if you don't want your detector to pick up your scoop, like all the other metal scoops out there, check out this file below. So today we're going to talk about uh, metal detectors. I have owned two of those. I have the Equinox 800 here. But a lot of the questions I get when I'm searching for rare coins on the beach, the most asked question is, what is the best metal detector to buy? And I say the best metal detector is the one that you know how to use, navigate the screen, mixed with what you can afford. So let me quickly share how they work so you can make a solid decision. Metal detectors don't actually transmit a signal into the ground and wait for a response um, reflected off of a metal to target. That's how radar works. And metal detectors are not like radar. The search coil on a metal detector radiates or emits an electromagnetic field all around itself. When a metal object enters that electromagnetic field, it creates an anomaly in that field. And the detector's processor sense is that anomaly up here through the cord rather than one down directional wave that everyone thinks. If a metallic object is swung above the coil, it will pick it up as well. I found that this is something that metal detecting beginners, beginners are failing to understand and it's important to understand the coils. Metal detectors do transmit a signal as well as receive a signal. So let me explain some of the parts in the type of different metal detectors now. This is the control box which holds the batteries. It sends the signal all the way down to this coil. The coil produces the electromagnetic field. That electromagnetic field stimulates the metal and it sends one back and the coil goes all the way up here and it transmits and produces beeps. There's three basic types of metal detectors. The simplest one is a very low frequency that is suitable for every base basic metal detection or treasure hunting needs. Basically, the second one is pulse induction metal detectors that use higher frequencies and post signals. They can generally pick up objects much, much deeper than very low frequency detector. But the pulse induction detectors are not that discriminating and they are not widely used. The third type of detector is the full band spectrum detector or FBS that uses multiple frequencies at the same exact time. This one is the Equinox 800. You could say that this one is an FBS detector. You could say it uses several slightly tuned detectors at the same exact time. That's why I went with that, but I have other ones like the Gold Monster 1000. Then we talk about this question that I get asked all the time if I'm outside metal detecting. How deep does a metal detector go? And there's no answer to this. Unfortunately, because it depends on so many different reasons, including the size and shape of the metal object and where, what has been buried, bigger things, of course, easier to detect than smaller things. And of course, the orientation of the object plays a big role. If we have a coin that lies flat on the ground, it's easier to detect than a coin that's lying sideways. It's both basically common sense. And actually, the age of the object placed there is also plays role. The longer it's been in the ground, it has a corroded and has more stuff on the outside. That's why it's more challenging to find those objects. We have the nature of the soil and the sand that you're detecting on that place, which is significant role. And finally, in terms of how deep or how much deep does a metal detector sense, it depends on your metal detector. If you have a single frequency or a multi-frequency like this one, you're going to get a lot deeper. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. We'll see you out at the beach park or wherever hunting. Take care.